was wrong for the last couple weeks. This market isn't heating up, it's actually heated up. Check this out. 18 offers, seven offers, five offers, three offers, five offers, more than 50 groups at the open house here. Oh, and more than 50 groups at this open house, and then more than 70 groups at this open house. So we have a lot to talk about this January 30th with the Massachusetts real estate market update. As always, we're gonna be going over the single family and condo market in Massachusetts, and it seems like some doom and gloomers out there might be waking up a little to the realities of the many marketplaces throughout the country. I also have some very interesting national pending numbers to share. Interest rates, we're going to talk about them, but they were kind of boring, which is just the way that I like it. And we need to talk about the economy. It feels conflicting. It feels like the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. All this data just makes your head spin. Soft landing, hard landing. What does this mean for the real estate market? Our check-in on the distressed properties in Massachusetts, as we always do every single week. And then we're going to take a look at this luxury property in the South End. It's a newly listed single family home. Things gorgeous. It's a jam-packed episode, so let's get going. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses and am one of the state's top real estate agents in Massachusetts. If you like hearing about the Massachusetts real estate market, then be sure to hit that like and subscribe button below. But let's dig into the data. And as always, we're going to start with the single family market. We currently have 3,069 homes on the market. Inventory continues to drop. It's down 5% from last week. And at this point, it's safe to say that that inventory increase that we saw in the beginning of the year, that was just an outlier. Take a look at the year over year. If this year acts anything like last year, then we really won't see any significant inventory gains until the end or mid-March, if you will. The reason inventory is going down is simply that supply is not continuing to keep up with demand. As a matter of fact, we sold 12% more houses this week than came on the market last week. The number of more houses available compared to this same time last year shrunk to 1,131 units, and this is compared to 1,145 just last week. So essentially, we're on pace for the same as last year. Well, at least the beginning of the year when that was a very hot market. We had 505 new listings come on the market this week. And this number pulled back a bit from last week's new listings, still about 10% off of this week's last year's numbers when 550 units came on the market. We had 659 houses go under agreement this week. Again, this is about 10% off of last year's numbers when 734 houses went under agreement. So new listings are down 10% from last year's numbers and under agreements are down 10% from last year's numbers and your year over year inventory is staying relatively flat, man, maybe down slightly. From this snapshot, it really seems that the market's about 10% off those crazy numbers that we were posting last year. Things that really make you go, hmm. There were 416 houses that sold last week for a median sales price of $505,000 and an average sales price of $677,000. Sorry that I'm just not sorry here. I just had to look up some preliminary January numbers because I was really, really, really curious. Prices look like they might actually be up. Sales were down significantly, but prices might be up. So be on the lookout for that January update that I should have posted sometime next week. And then months of inventory. This is how we determine uh, what type of market we're in. Zero to five months as considered a seller's market. The closer we are to zero, the stronger seller's market that it is. Now this week, months of inventory ticked up to 1.16 months from last week's 1.13 months. Now this indicates that it is a strong seller's market. And I continue to beat that drum. If you're a seller and you're planning on selling your house this spring, then now might just be the best time to do it. And if that's you, then well, I'd love to chat with you. On to the condo market. We had 1,737 condos on the market as of Monday. Now inventory decreased by about 3% this week from last week's number. But even with the decrease in inventory, the amount of additional inventory that a buyer has to look at today compared to today last year increased to 385 units compared to last week's 322 units. And here's where it gets a, well, a little incredible actually because the condo market has been the weaker of the two markets. 293 newly listed condos came on the market last week. And for comparison purposes, we listed 294 units just last year, this week, last year. So we were one unit off. We had 347 condos that went under agreement last week, and this is compared to 365 that went under agreement this week last year. So we were about 5% off that number. That's not bad. We had 206 units that closed this week for an average sales price of $645,000 and that median sales price of $550. Then that months of inventory moved up to 1.67 months from 1.62 months last week. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then I appreciate you hitting that like button as it makes a big difference to those YouTube gobs. 
And by the way, subscribing, that doesn't hurt either. Let's talk mortgages. It's been a boring week for the mortgage world and that's how we all love it. Interest rates, they didn't really move up for the week and they didn't really go down. But the boringness is making way for a falling of the real estate market. The stable rates are bringing buyers back in, dare I say it, groves. Check this out. Mortgage apps are on the rise as rates drift lower. And that loan activity posted a third straight gain during the week ended January 20th. There is some economic news on the horizon that could cause for a little shakeup in the interest rate world. So what do we got? We have the Fed on February 1st. We have jobless claims on February 2nd. And then we've got the unemployment rate on February 3rd. Those are the major indicators that are coming this weekend could really shape the interest rate market. And did you see this? Pending home sales trend up for the first time since last spring. Since you've been watching our channel for a while, well, you already knew this. We keep you a couple months ahead of the curve here. But nationwide, which is really dumb to talk about, but nonetheless, everyone does, so here we go. Pending home sales rose in December for the first time since May 2022, increasing 2.5% from November. These doom and gloom guys are just really starting to annoy me. Real estate is local. Actually, that just gave me a really great idea for a video. What is a crash? Everyone just throws around that term. Help me out here. How much of a percentage point decrease does a market need to go down in order for it to be a crash? Throw your opinion in the comments section below. And real quick, follow-up question, actually. Is this definition the same as to what you would consider in the equity market? So if it's 10%, is a crash 10% if the stock market goes down? I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on that one. But back to real estate. What is interesting is that by region, the Northeast and Midwest saw month-over-month decreases as the South and West saw some month-over-month gains. That's completely backwards from everything that we've actually seen up to this point. But now let's talk the economy. Have you seen the layoffs start? starting to mount. I mean, here are just a couple so far this year. 3,900 at IBM, 12,000 at Google, 10,000 at Microsoft, 18,000 at Amazon, 13% of Facebook's workforce, 10% of Salesforce's workforce. And there are a lot more. I'm just hitting some of the high notes here. And we're starting to really see it with buyers. In the last week, we've spoken to three buyers who were pre-approved and going to start looking at some homes this spring, and then they were just laid off. We also are really starting to see it in some cracks in that more vulnerable consumer end of the market. Now, check out this article that compares Discover, which, by the way, caters to consumers with lower credit scores compared to like a JP Morgan. Now, JP Morgan Chase, which serves a more affluent customer base, expects credit card losses to still be below pre-pandemic levels at the end of 2023. Meanwhile, Discover expects losses to blow past pre-pandemic levels this year. Then there's the car loan market. More Americans can't afford their car payments than during the peak of the financial crisis. And don't get me wrong, the car market was a special market during COVID and now maybe today they're just paying for some of those crazy times. I have this really interesting article in the description section below. You got to check it out. It's truly a great read. And then there's this recession is on its way. Dallas Fed shows fact factory activity slumps for the ninth straight month. So what am I saying here? There are some real headwinds in the economy. Things are starting to crack, but as of now, it looks like it's two different stories based off of two different segments of the consumer in our economy. But here Here is my opinion on all of this. The rest of the economy is just now catching up to us in the housing market. The housing market, well, we entered a recession back in September-ish. Sales, they dried up. And as I have continued to say, it was a rough fall. Housing's gonna pull the economy out of this recession. Rates are gonna go down as the economy starts to falter, which is going to positively impact the housing market, which then stimulates the construction market, and then the furniture market, which then stimulates the auto market. Because hey, those construction guys, they gotta go out and buy a new truck. After all, each home sale contributes to about $113,000 to the economy. Massachusetts didn't see a correction, and I'm going to leave a slight possible crack of the store open that it might possibly see a correction, but it won't see a crash. And for those markets that got slaughtered, think Vegas, Phoenix, Atlanta, help is on the way. You may just be seeing daylight on the horizon. But now on to foreclosures. Accounting for all single family condos and multifamily properties for sale in Massachusetts, we currently have 99 foreclosures for sale. This was a huge drop from last week's 115 units. And currently there are 16 short sale properties for sale. In the entire state of Massachusetts, we currently have 115 distressed properties for sale in the entire state. The percentage of distressed properties to available inventory continues to decrease and is now 2.11% of all available inventory in Massachusetts. And this is compared to last week's 2.21%. I'm just talking out loud here, but I, I think this is something that I may just start including on a monthly basis since it's starting to really look more and more 
that foreclosures aren't going to be flooding this marketplace. And now onto the luxury single family home in the South End. Now this home is located at 39 Union Park, which is one of my favorite locations with the park in between the gorgeous brick row houses. I mean, it's just a stunning area. This is a five bedroom, six full bath and two half bath home that is a total of 6,800 square feet with more than 5,800 square feet being above grade. Now the question is, where do you start with this place? Do you start with the soaring ceilings or the immaculate detail throughout or maybe the huge windows that just allow for the sun to just pour in? Most people, they're gonna start in the foyer as they enter this six story home that reflects a balance of European design and modern finishes. Now the custom kitchen offers flat paneled walnut cabinets with a large island that joins the family room and balcony. It has two distinct outdoor living areas, which include a private tiered garden as well as a terrace. This home, it was renovated and restored through the helm of renowned design firm Studio Dykus. Now the seller, their asking price is currently $11.5 million. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Maybe that luxury house or maybe something a lot less expensive. All of my information, it's in the description below. I'd love to chat with you. You can also visit me at youtuberealestateagent.com and fill in your information. And then we will actually reach out to you, whichever way works best for you. I love to talk about real estate. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. Questions or comments about all of this data and throw them in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to respond to you. And as I always say, an informed person, well, they're a powerful person. So until next,